I hope so. Well, let's find out. Hello and welcome to the Ritual Misery Podcast, episode 226 for Thursday, the 5th of September, 2019. This is a show where two lifelong friends and their guests celebrate all things geek. I'm Amos and I have my special co-host with me tonight, Mr. Richard Gunther. How are you today? I am doing so well. I am so excited to be here for this special occasion. We will dive into that more and more and more, but I'm more excited that we are for me anyway, unexpectedly joined by none other than Jenny Josephson. Oh, dang. Look at that. She just randomly shows up. What? 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 What is that? What, Jenny, this is an audio podcast. You, you kind of have to explain what's going on. Here. Are you holding up? Your, are you holding up your broken middle finger? It's not broken. I just sliced it with a mandolin. <laughs> oh. But, you know, uh, I think that's the most important news of the day, really. Uh, what, what were you cutting with the mandolin? Uh, carrots, okay. which is a bad idea. I mean, at least at least it's a good vegetable slash fruit. Yeah, but I think the the lesson I took away from almost severing the top hand, you know, the top of my middle finger down to the nail was fuck salad. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Well, I mean, uh, what's going on with you guys? Uh, shoot. <laughs> um, so I am, as I said, officially retired. Uh, as of one September, I am now a a veteran. I am no longer active duty, which brings up this whole conversation we're going to have tonight on uh, the uh, values of our current constitutional crisis. Dude, and Chris, <laughs> first of all, congratulations so much. Like I, you know, I like I hope everybody who listens to you has already had an opportunity to actually watch your retirement ceremony because it is on YouTube. Mm, it is. And I, you know, in my mind, this happened so long ago, but I don't understand this whole retire here, then retire then, and then pick up Anthony's papers been retiring here. for six months. Right. It really, um, well, actually, it really feels like he's been retiring for approximately 18 months. <laughs> If you've been yeah. listening to this show, because <laughs> there's been preparation, I'm telling you. Yeah. Um, so the, the thing is, typically in the military, when you go to leave, you have a bunch of leave saved up, like vacation time saved up. So you do your, your retirement at the beginning of that, then you just disappear and you never come back. Well, for me, I picked this very specific day because it was the 15 year anniversary of meeting my wife. So I wanted to do my retirement ceremony on that day. I was already doing the internship, so I wasn't going to my normal job anyway. And my enlistment, finally, final retirement was uh, August 31st. So September 1st, I officially became no longer a DOD employee. I'm now wow. a retired veteran of the American Armed Services. That is well, so cool. Thank you for your service. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, let her fucking rip. <laughs> Yeah, although, although, so, so here's what I want to say, right? One of the things that I have loved about the show, and I've told you this multiple times, is that I feel like you and Kent have provided some really good insight to people who don't often get an opportunity to talk about or share their experiences working in the service or who are who feel too encumbered to, to do that. They don't want to talk about it or they feel like these are issues that we should just deal with and we need to be big and strong and not, not talk about them. And you guys have, I think done such a great thing by talking about issues that you and your families and, and your, your friends and social circles deal with as people in the military. And I hope that you continue to do that as you look at your life after the military as a veteran, like now as a veteran, how has that affected the way you look at things and how is life as a veteran and what things are you dealing with? And I think that's going to be interesting too, because <laughs> I know you've dealt with it a little bit, but oh my God, the VA, what a clusterfuck. Uh, I actually just got my claim back today, which is in record time. Um, my VA claim came back a hundred percent disabled. Wow. So that's a nice little paycheck added to my retirement. 
uh, tax free that that will allow me to do more podcasting on my terms instead of instead of working for a living. I'm going to be working for fun, which is uh, what everybody. Do I have wanted. to be worried? <laughs> do I need to be worried? O only if you give me certain clients. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Doo doo. Yeah, my, my my VA letter is is officially my fuck you check. <laughs> yep. Yep. Good job. Congratulations. Um, hey, I also started IQMZ Tech again this week with Owen J.J. Stone, a.k.a. Odocta, uh, our weekly tech show where we talk about tech from a normal man point of view, not a reporter, not a insider, awesome. just guys that are really enthusiastic about tech. And uh, we started that back up. And as soon as we can get the Apple feed, uh, the iTunes feed, uh, conf re, re unfucked whatever I, they're they're being bitches about it um as soon as that goes that episode will be live it's already done produced and i took the tom Merritt way of, of producing things so it's all produced on the spot and it only took me about 45 minutes to get pushed out the door if itunes would just accept the feed so yeah look forward that to that is so cool I'm, I'm really happy to hear that but i mean it's all kind of moot with itunes now because you me we all fall under Technology now yep. without subcategories. So <laughs> fuck Joe Rogan. That's yeah, all that's I have all to, I'm say. Gonna say. Seriously. <laughs> Jerk. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's how that happens. Um now Richard, we're gonna quickly get through some of our intro stuff, just let people know where we're at. But you're working again. Like you're it says I'm working again. Are you back on contract? Well, I have a small contract that I've been working on over the last couple of weeks. And it, it's been uh, kind of unusual for me to be working eight hour days <laughs> like <laughs> consecutively. I haven't had that for a while, it, actually since the spring. So I am under contract, but it's kind of more of a retainer kind of thing. Mm. And nothing's really come up on that. So in the meantime, I've been trying to get other small jobs and I've been, I'm actually wrapping up one with uh, a fairly big client that I enjoy working with. And I'm hoping I get to do a little bit more with them, but it's been really fun. And one of the things that I, this is one of those jobs where instead of being the guy that goes in and like gives the presentation and facilitates workshops and helps uh, like orchestrate things, I'm actually getting my hands dirty. I'm actually building something. And I, I know that you totally appreciate this Anthony because like we've talked about like how when you get to play with actual not play with but like use actual tools that let you get stuff done it's extremely rewarding and mm -hmm. in the space that I uh, work in which is basically digital content or uh, a digital software then uh, we often like to prototype things or simulate how something is going to work before you build it. Mm -hmm. Or maybe as an example of this is how it works, but you don't have to be online on the system. Here's a way you can demo this big, huge system that you have. And so I've been using this tool called Envision that's kind of a mainstay in the user experience and digital agency field if you're trying to mock up how an application will look or feel or behave. And it does a really good job of simulating an experience of using an application just literally with screen captures and effects from one screen to the next. And it's just been a lot of fun. Like I've, I've had so much fun doing this and it kind of encourages me to get out there. Like one of the things I'm really bad at, see, I made I made the decision a year and a half ago that I when my company closed down that I was working for that I was going to work independently. Mm -hmm. And it seemed like a great idea. It seemed like I'd make great money. I'd be able to continue to, you know, uh, uh, work with customers at the rate that I was used to getting. And that is a great idea. But you know what I suck at? I suck at the sales part. I am not <laughs> good at that. Like I, I, the back office stuff for keeping the business working and everything is great. But when I have to actually go out and sell myself, I am not good at that. So yeah. when, when I actually have something that I'm working on, I love that. And it kind of encourages me to, mm, maybe I need to get my ass going and get some more of this stuff. Yeah. 
I, mm. on, on a similar front, I officially applied for a business license today. Oh, very good. I, I, nice. I am now the, uh, officially the owner of Audio Aperture Media LLC. Oh, that's oh. great. Yeah. So wow. combining my two loves, podcasting and photography into one title, finally found one that fits that hadn't been taken. And, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so uh, <laughs> cool. look forward to some more information about that. Uh, uh ahead, I'm Jenny. excited about information about that for very specific reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Taxes. I'm uh, just saying. <laughs> uh, have, have either of you seen any good movies lately? Uh, no. I'm y yes. What, what, what was it? But it, it it not new. I oh. watched yeah. something. Yeah. Well, what would you watch? That I've had in my library for a while, and I haven't watched it yet. And I think you guys talked about it like a long time ago. I finally watched Ralph Wrecks the Internet. Oh. Okay. Oh. I haven't seen it yet. Oh, I loved it. It was so much fun. Yeah. It was so much fun. And if you're a Disney fan, there is some serious fan service in this for mm. Disney fans. Yeah, this is one that I've been waiting to see with with one of the kids because it's it's always fun to watch them their reactions to things. Uh, we have it in our library. I just I didn't watch it. I'm like the only person in the house that hasn't seen it, and I loved Wreck It Ralph, so I can't wait to see it. Yeah, you should totally um, watch it. I think I have it in my library 4K in case you're interested. <laughs> <laughs> my Matt and I. Uh, Matt and I have been on an old movie kick because we watch that CNN special, the movies, and it, it oh, takes yeah. every decade and a couple, some, one of them has a couple of decades in there. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. That's all about um, the movies. And so, of course, we were like, well, haven't seen that, haven't seen that, haven't seen that, haven't seen that. And uh, have been proceeding. I'd never seen West Side Story, which is crazy. I haven't seen it either. Yeah. Mm. I, I had never seen, well, Matt had never seen the Maltese Falcon. I'd seen it. Uh, and so, and we just have been going through these movies and that's been really fun because it really has been like a drought at the end of August in terms of a big movie that would force us into a theater. Yeah. Um, I plan on watching it too this weekend <sighs> because I'm a huge fan of the book. No desire. I love no the first desire. One. Um, but that, that brings us into, uh, the oh so sad portion of the show, which in which Kent and I almost won a movie draft. Welcome to your Movie Draft Minute, presented by DiamondClub.tv for the week of September 2nd, 2019. I'm your host, Big Voice Jay. You know, I was going to give you a Labor Day joke today, but it just doesn't work for me. Let's go to the scoreboard. <laughs> Team Game Nights in last place with $211.8 million. Team The Vod Squad's in fifth place with $530.6 million. Team Have a Drink is in fourth place with $775.7 million. Team Drunk Kids Gaming is in third place with $1 billion. 6.3 million dollars. Team Retro Misery's in second place with 1 billion 32 million dollars. And in first place with 1 billion 259 million dollars, it's Team Movie Party. Let your stream Team Movie Draft Minute all told as a record as of September 4th, 2019. Now, the question is, me and Kent called it a long time ago that we were locked in at second place. We knew we weren't mm -hmm. going to beat uh, the Team Movie Night or whatever because they had they had Marvel or whatever, and and basically they whooped our ass. But we were we were <laughs> we were solid in second place. However, Drunk Kids Gaming, the one movie they have left is making about six million per weekend. Lion King is still making six million per weekend. Mm. There's four weeks left in the draft, and we're only twenty four million ahead of them. So if Lion King keeps inching up there's a possibility we could slide down to third by just a hair it is, it is extremely <laughs> unlikely that it'll keep the exact current earnings right week after week after week i mean come on yep but as long it's got to trail off a little faster than i'm thinking it's going to <laughs> um 24 million is not a lot to make up for when you're still making six million a weekend so yeah I mean, I made six million this weekend. I'm just saying. Oh, you did? Yeah. No. That's that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> no. No. I made six million in Monopoly money on a Xerox okay. machine. <laughs> All right. Well, that's you know. Um. Okay. So uh, Kent usually does this, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. And I, we don't have a jingle for me because well, Kent's special. 
Can I please have your attention? In the last 30 minutes, Kent's done something. Now you've got a guess. He was very excited. Kent's games. Play with him. Play with him. Tonight's quiz is called Twidiot. Can you imagine what that's about? I'm going to read out a tweet, and you guys need to tell me whether or not tweet it was tweeted by Donald Trump. So this is yes or no if it was tweeted by Donald Trump. We will alternate who goes first. Um, random roll of the dice says that Jenny goes first because ladies first. And I'll I'm going. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to read the tweet, and then you'll tell me whether or not you think it is or is not Donald Trump's original tweet. And then Richard, you will give your say, and then we will reveal the answer and move on to the next one. And the next one, Richard will go first. So the first one. Remember, new environment-friendly light bulbs can cause cancer. Be careful; the idiots who came up with this stuff don't care. Fake. Richard? I agree. I agree. That's not Trump. Unfortunately, it is Trump. You both <laughs> missed it. <laughs> no oh my fucking God. way. Are you serious? Yep. So Wait. So wait, when? Well, like how is that during his term or I, I don't, is that I don't have times on these. I don't have dates. I just have the tweet itself. Wow. That yeah. is wow. <laughs> Oh, it gets better. <laughs> wow! Oh man, did you did you see the 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 Sharpie sketch with uh, uh, the um, the the uh, uh, windmills irradiating people that were dying? Oh my God! I, like the the today's thing was Sharpie sketches, right? So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> All right, that's wow. Okay, next is me first. Yes. Truly weird Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky reminds me of a spoiled brat without a properly functioning brain. He was terrible at debate. Yeah, absolutely. That's Trump. True. It is, they, they, you're both correct. It is Trump. Yeah. <laughs> I think the secret to this game is to always say true. Uh, no, that will, that, will, that will not let net you uh, at least 60%, which is what you need for the D. Oh. Hmm. Um, okay, next. Ryan Seacrest told me I had to get on Twitter, so here I am. First tweet, I feel younger already. Jenny? True. Richard? Mm -hmm. I say false. That was James Cameron. Oh, <laughs> another megalomaniac. Fantastic. <laughs> Yeah, but at least one that is, I don't know, maybe Talented. a little bit more benign. <laughs> Fair. All right, next tweet. And Richard, you're first. If Obama resigns from office now, thereby doing a great service to the country, I will give him free lifetime golf at any one of my courses. Oh, I so want that to be true. I so want that to be true. I, I That... <sighs> I'm going to say yes, it's true. Jenny? Yeah, true. It is true. <laughs> I mean, who else has golf courses? Right. Who else is only going to give him a, a, a lifetime uh, membership to only one of his golf courses? Right. <laughs> it's like... The one, the worst one. <laughs> yeah. Not, not his choosing, my choosing. Not ashamed to admit I am at most, <clears throat> sorry, not ashamed to admit I am at my most comfortable and confident walking around a mall. Jenny? Not false. That's false. That's That place is filled with germs. <laughs> Richard? Yeah, I'll agree with that. I, I, I would say that's false. You're both correct. That was Billy Eichner. Comedian oh, Billy Eichner. Oh, that's great. That's okay. Great. I am being proven right about massive vaccinations. The doctors lied. Save our children and their future. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, I so don't want this to be true. I'm going to say it's true. 
I'm going to say it's false. It's actually Jenny What's-Her-Face McCarthy. Uh, no, that was Donald Trump. Oh, oh. no. <laughs> that. Oh. It's cool. Okay. Oh, we are so stupid. We are just <laughs> such a stupid race of people. How <laughs> did we let this happen? Okay. Um, let's see. Jenny, Richard, Jenny, Richard, Jenny, Richard, Jenny. Okay. Yep. I'm so humble, it's crazy. I'm like the Kanye West of humility. That's true. I, I'm going to say, yeah. You're both wrong. That's actually Anna Kendrick. Oh, and it was an ironic joke. Gotta love her. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At Alex Salmond. Wind turbines are ripping our country apart and killing tourism. Electric bills in Scotland are skyrocketing. Stop the madness. Turbines, and I will say yes. True. It is Donald Trump. Because who else has a golf course in Scotland? <laughs> <laughs> he's actually really just worried about his hair flipping while he's on that golf course. An extremely credible source has called my office and told me that Barack Obama's birth certificate is a fraud. Is it my turn to go? Jenny Richard, Jenny Richard, Jenny Richard, Jenny Richard, Jenny. That's fucking true. And by that I mean I remember that tweet. <laughs> Richard? I don't know if that was the exact tweet or not, but I'm going to say true. I got news for you. That was the exact tweet. Oh, okay. Because I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. That was well, obviously, well, before, that was like a long time ago. And, and he tagged Barack Obama in it. It was at Barack Obama. Yeah. 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 I'm having and, a hard time waiting until the next segment. The, the fucking birther movement. <laughs> is, it the Neil Practi uh, is it the Neil Patrick Harris show or the Emmy Awards? How was he ever put in this position to start with? Crazy. Uh, why? What's in it for him for, for bashing on Neil Patrick Harris? Like, what's the point? I'm going to say yes, it's true. Jenny? I think it's true because I think he would have been watching because I think he was hoping his stupid show would win. That is Donald Trump. Yeah. All you have to do in this game is follow the self-interest. <laughs> <laughs> no more self-interest. Um, the likelier. Curtis, Curtis LaRock in the chat room says, this game is easy. I hope it's not true. It is. <laughs> oh, wait. Exactly. That... Hey, Curtis. How's it going? <laughs> hi, Curtis. Also, I have to say hi to Wabbit Magic because mm -hmm. he said hi, and I can't write back because I'm not in the chat room. So hi, Wabbit Magic. You know. <laughs> All right, uh, we're back to Jenny. At Katy Perry, I watched Russell Brand, and I think his mind is fried. He looks really bad. Russell is a total joke, a dummy who was lost. True. I'm going to say false, not him. And this is the first time Jenny's got one when Richard has not. It is Donald oh. Trump. I went with the Pattinson Stewart theory of minding your own business <laughs> or failing to mind your own business. Right. Yeah, exactly. Sorry, losers and haters, but my IQ is one of the highest and true. you all know it. Please don't feel <laughs> true, so stupid true, or insecure. True. It's not your fault. That's totally true. Oh my God! It is true. That is his. Uh, that's, a, that's an original Donald Trump, J. Trump tweet. Uh, Quarantine Africa. Why haven't they done so already? Should have when this whole Ebola thing first started. Uh, so I think I'm gonna. Who is, oh, who's up first? Who's up first? Jenny. I'm gonna answer in the words of my favorite uh, Twitter account. Uh, racism watchdog, and I'm going to go bark, 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 bark. <laughs> go look it up. It's really good. Uh, that's true. That's so, you, so you say it's true. Okay. Yeah, and Ri also racist. Richard? And I'm going to say it's true because 
just of the absurdity of the reality of quarantining a continent. Ugh. That was actually random Twitter user Leah King. Uh. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, wait. No. Was that the one where she was on an air? She tweeted it. She got on an airplane. She got off an airplane and she was like canceled by all of Twitter. Or was that someone else? Oh, it could have been. I don't know. I remember oh, that one. There was I one... remember that scenario, but I don't remember yeah. what the tweet was. I don't was. remember who it was. Some PR lady was like, bah, 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 air the country of Africa and got off a plane and had just been like group canceled by all of Twitter because everyone was like, it's a continent. Um, uh, okay. Where's... Titanic. Wait, I want to. Go ahead. Oh, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. Titanic 100 years. Wow. Global warming could have saved Titanic. Sad to say. Uh, uh, no, it's just too absurd. No, I'm gonna say no. It's too absurd. Uh, yeah, I'm also gonna say no. You are both correct. That was actually yeah. Jose Canseco. <laughs> dum dum, uh, OG dum dum. <laughs> Uh, I want to I want to just jump in briefly and say if you are not following at racism dog, which is R-A-C-I-S M D O G, you should because it's really good. And every time someone says something racist on Twitter, that dog barks. <laughs> awesome. The concept of global warming was created by and for the Chinese in order to make U.S. manufacturing non competitive. True. Richard? I'm thinking. I'm trying to figure out any like the, any reasoning behind it. I'm going to say false. That was true. That was a John, oh. Donald J. Trump original tweet. Like, what? Mm -hmm. like, if everybody in the world dropped out of school, we would have a much better, much more intelligent society. False. False. You're correct. That was Jaden Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yep. My Twitter has become so Irony, powerful. Thou shot no, anyway. <clears throat> my my Twitter has become so powerful that I can actually make my enemies tell the truth. That sounds like someone who's on drugs. Jenny, you are first. So false. Richard? I'll also say false. That's true. And I remember that tweet. Oh. oh. Good grief. Okay. Three more to go. It makes me so happy when the Miami housewives get along with each other. I'm such a sap. Watching finale. LOL. Don't judge me on this. Oh, that's false. <laughs> Richard, I think it was my turn it was. to go first, oh, but was, I I'm would sorry. have also said that that was false. You're both correct. That is Lindsay Lohan. I knew it. I remember. I remember that one. Sorry about that. <laughs> I lost track. <laughs> All right, Jenny. This election is a total sham and a travesty. We are not a democracy. Who goes first? You do. Jenny. Okay, that's true. Yep, I agree. You were both correct. Last one. And he was right. He was absolutely right. Yeah. Just the wrong direction. <laughs> it's freezing and snowing in New York. We need global warming. Richard? All right, well, I've lost faith, so I'm going to say it's true. Jenny? Uh, I'm going to say it's true. You're both correct. That was a Donald J. Trump tweet. And I remember that I'm one as well. fucking believable. <laughs> All right. So how do we do? I think Jenny won. Um, let's see here. There's an R. There's an R. Carry the J. There's a J. <laughs> and there's a J. You came out tied. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Co-stars. All right. And you both got an 80%-ish. Sure. Yeah, sounds good. Um, but as BioCal said in the chat room, everybody loses. 
<laughs> yeah. Bye, bye, <bio> cow. <laughs> exactly. Um, uh, exactly. Hey, uh, by the way, in, I don't know if you saw this in the news at all, but at last year's South by Southwest, the Daily Show did a hall of presidential tweets and took the entire mezzanine mm -hmm. level of one of the hotels and had multiple rooms like it was a museum of framed and and engraved and interactive displays and everything of all the stupid tweet shit that came out of that account it, it was brilliant that's amazing Hmm. Um, I want to get on to the last part of the show. The last thing I, ha, I'm just going to start off by saying how many people uh, uh, on this panel, um, think that we're going to have a new president on the beginning, the, the middle of January, 2021. Oh, wait, 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 hold on. I, I need to introduce this segment. Oh, oh, you have an introduction. I need mm -hmm. to introduce a segment because I think you're glossing over the importance of this mm -hmm. you haven't been able to share your thoughts as a an employed member of the military you you need to keep your thoughts to yourself on your political beliefs and stand behind your commander-in-chief and i give you utmost respect for that and and i i i know how challenging that can be for people if they don't share the same ideologies or the same uh, political party or whatever of the current president, I can't fucking imagine what you were going through with this idiot in the office. So please, this, Anthony, is your time. Let me first start by saying that the reason Kent is not here tonight, because people have asked in the chat room, is because he we, we thought it was the safer alternative for him to not be part of this episode when we're going to be openly talking about yeah the 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 president and the politics of the situation as he is still a DOD employee even though he's not in the military anymore right um there there's a definite conflict of interest there for him to come on here and us be bashing things and him first of all not be able to say his opinions and second of all just be associated with this conversation directly um yep I I started getting extreme anxiety attacks when it was announced that Trump was going to be the president. So much so that I self-reported to mental health because I couldn't imagine working for the man that showed some other underlying issues going on. But the fact remains that since I've taken off the uniform and been able to just stay home, work for Jenny for a while on the internship, my life, my mental state and everything else has gotten so much better. And I can actually handle the buffoonery that is in the White House right now. Well, I can handle it at all, which is to say yeah. infinitely more than I could before. Um, Kent and I actually had a a signal account. We, we started using signal because it's all you know, double encrypted and everything else mm -hmm. just so I could rant to him about the president on a secure, semi-secure messaging platform. Yeah. Um, because I couldn't, I could not hold it in how much of a disgrace that Trump is. And the, the, the issues that we have, like working on talking feds hearing the legal mm -hmm. arguments for the constitutional crisis that we're in, whether or not you consider it a constitutional crisis, when the president outwardly ignores one of the other branches, and in this case, stacks one and then ignores the other, we are in a constitutional crisis. The Constitution was written, it was built on the foundation of the morals and the intentions of the people being elected. And when those intentions are bad, or those morals are defunct, it's not going to work. And if you have an individual in the White House with both of those problems at the same time, there's nothing to corral him. There's nothing to stand in his way, especially when you have the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, is a complete shill for all the things that Trump is trying to do. Mm -hmm. It becomes Jenny, a kleptocracy. 
Yeah. 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 I forget which episode it was of Talking Feds where they they discussed specifically that assumption of good intent right. mm-hmm. in everything put together in the Constitution. And that even if there was not good intent, that the Constitution could address that because the other houses would were there to curb the were there to correct the, the problem. Right. 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 Except what? when you, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, Anthony, I don't want to jump ahead because I really, you've been waiting like, I don't know, 37 years for this. So I, feel free to continue. <laughs> we'll jump in when you're done. No, by all means. Like this is, this is an open discussion. I didn't okay. even have, I've, I've got so, some articles linked in the show notes of places where like I did a, a search for Trump and it came up with nothing but just bad shit. So, yeah. So, okay. I'm going to back it up just a little bit which is I basically left journalism for a million reasons, like long standing thought process going on, which was like that the journalism that I did, not the really deep investigative stuff, because that stuff is so necessary, but like the day to day, just telling you what's up journalism was fundamentally flawed because we had to keep up. We had to lie by omission and keep our opinions to ourselves where really we should have just said, I have this opinion. And yet I also went and talked to five people. And so I did the reporting. So what I'm telling you is the reporting, not the opinion. Mm. Or if I'm going to tell you the opinion, I'm going to tell you I didn't go do the reporting. This is my opinion. And now I'm going to go do the reporting and find out and see if it holds up or not holds up. Can't do that in journalism, like in the traditional invented at Harvard. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, well, that's not journalism. That's just Satan. Uh, so the, <laughs> the concept of journalistic objectivity was invented to give some semblance of respectability to journalism. And it failed. It has failed miserably for quite some time in a variety of fields. Climate change, which is uh, a word that became popular, but it is very passive and does not adequately address the end of the world. Uh, objectivity also failed us when we talk about issues of race and racism in America, because what other side would you like to be quoting? Like, and then, uh, it failed us most in a very specific entertainment centric way with the coverage of the 2016 election. Um, and it, failed us in very specific ways that ended us up with a disastrous, uh, alleged by many women rapist a racist who is finding a way to put his racist things into action by literally penning people and children up separating them like doing stuff that like anytime someone says to me uh uh you know maybe we needed this maybe our country needed this to be able to see what's really going on inside the republican party and with trump i'm like yeah that's fucking nice. There's babies in cages. You needed this as some bullshit that I, I just get so furious because I'm like, no, I don't think we needed to put people in cages and not give them soap. And there's babies dying in cages. Die have died. Yes. Like, like that's. Anyway, uh, Richard, I pass to the right. No, I, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm dead on with you. The, the, the whole situation makes me makes me sad, makes me sick, like literally sick to my stomach, like literally feeling nauseated sometimes when I hear the news. There are nights when like, so unfortunately I'm addicted to the news now. It's a train wreck I can't stop watching. Right. And many friends wiser than me have counseled me that I need to stop watching the news. And I, I, I get that, but at the same time, I kind of, I don't want to become, I don't want to just say, okay, all that shit's happening and I don't care anymore. Mm -hmm. I, I, I want to know how bad it's getting and every day it gets worse, right? Like Mm. this has happened for two and a half years now that every day it gets worse and you wonder how can it get worse? How can we sink lower? How can he embarrass us more than he already has? Yep. Greenland. And... Oh my God. 
He canceled right. a trip because they wouldn't talk about selling a continent-sized island. Right. Let's cancel a trip with a with, with a, 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 a and um an authority whoever what was head it of, the, head of state with a head of state that is a strategic ally mm -hmm. and military ally for us a, mi a military ally and an important military ally for us and he canceled that because he was angry that they wouldn't sell him their country. By the way, does he realize, and I think he's talked about it, but I don't think it's dawned on him, a huge number of people, way higher in percentage than in the United States, in Greenland are on welfare support. The, 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 the state of Denmark pays for many of them to live. Yeah. Because we went in and fucked up their their land and convinced them that they needed to have Christian religion and that they needed to live in houses instead of huts and tents, which they were perfectly happy with and which served them well. And now they have all these needs that they don't need and they can't afford them. And so it is a cost center. Oh my God. I, so much has gone wrong and I've always, uh, I've always said that if you're, if you are a conservative, you'll see me, as a liberal independent. And if you're a liberal, you would probably see me as a conservative independent. I, I draw that, that middle round, middle ground. I've like, I'm, I, I support gun rights, you know, I, but I also support gun control. Like, I don't think that I should have my shotgun upstairs and the police not know it's there. That's, you know, I should, I should have to license those, but I don't. And I could just carry them into fucking oh, Walmart yeah. if I want to. You, you, know? you gun elite or whatever the NRA called you earlier. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I've, I've always kind of drawn the, a middle ground, at least in my mind. And I think a lot of people feel that way. But I've never felt more liberal than, mm. than once Trump was elected. Because, because my, to the right of right is just insanity and fiction. And right. to the to the left of left too, to be honest. Oh yeah. Uh, but but I think what what is happening is we are finally in a position where the Republican Party and the conservative movement in general feels so emboldened that they don't feel they can do any wrong, and all of the wackos on the far right finally feel that they can come out of their holes, which on one aspect that's good. I I now know I have a bunch of people on my Facebook that. I have in a special little group that I call racist sons of bitches that I will never deal with again <laughs> that I didn't know they were, they felt that way until president Trump came around. But on the other hand, we're just bringing the window even further to the right, be just out of inaction. And I, I don't see how it, it ends positively. And this is one of the things that I fight with internally on a regular basis. Like how does our democ democracy survive this? Because being the cynic that you both know I am, I see, you know, as Kent once told me, I see bones in them dice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, here's, here's where I think we are now. And it, again, man, Jenny, I, the, <laughs> the show has both informed and, um, uh, just kind of refined been my warm security blanket mm. over the last couple of months talking feds the in case anybody doesn't know who's listening the show that uh, Jenny and Anthony produce is it, probably one of the most insightful views by people who really understand this stuff about and the law, like what, the law specifically, yeah. Like the law and constitutional law specifically, and people who have who have worked in the space and have hands-on experience with the stuff, and in many cases, hands-on experience with the names you're hearing in the news. 
So what? And sometimes they are the names you hear in the news. Yeah. yeah. No, no, ex- exactly. So like this, this show has, it's, it's been I, really helpful to me because it makes me realize or not realize, I guess, but it reinforces my, um, uh, the, the, to me that I'm okay. I'm not blowing this out of proportion. It is crazy. It is a mess. This shouldn't be happening. And so one of the things that in one of the shows people were talking about was that if this goes on for another 16 months or however long it is, we'll survive this. Mm. The, 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 the nation states in the rest of the world are basically aware of the fact that he's a buffoon and they're just putting up with this until he's out of office. Mm-hmm. The people in the Republican Party who are career politicians who really care about politics are just sucking it up and keeping their mouths shut and dealing with it because they believe in the country and they want to do something, but they feel like they're imprisoned in some way. I or feel like they're, PM. they're like the political version of Melania Trump, right? Like they're, they're in a situation where it they, they thought this was a great place to be. And it turns out that this is a prison. It is a hell. There's nothing they can do about it. And they feel like they have no power. The irony is that they have all the power Mm -hmm. if they were to stand together, but they're not willing to do it. Now, it's it's just like a schoolyard bully. Yeah, it is just like a schoolyard bully. Be best. Now, one if if this goes on for another four years, because somehow Mm -hmm. the American populace is too stupid. It wouldn't be the American populace. Let's just put it that way. Right. And okay, okay, but. To, to if if we don't get people to 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 go out and vote, and stop this, and it, it, assuming in saying that that I mean that I know there's going to be voter suppression, yeah. however you define that, and yeah. that that going out and voting has to overcome that, mm-hmm. we need masses to go out and vote and fight against this like has never happened before. And unless that happens and we end up in a situation where he's in for another four years, then I don't know. I don't know how we recover from eight yeah. years of this and the damage that it will do in the I globe. I don't know, because all of us will be in people. camps. <laughs> right. I, my, my fear on that is, can you, can you imagine a world where Trump doesn't have anything to lose? Yeah. Because that's the thing about being a lame duck president, right? Like you can't win. And a lame duck term. president with multiple trials waiting for him. Right. So. Oh, but... and if that happens, do you want to take bets on whether he tries to pass something to extend the term of the president again? Oh, I I already don't think there's going to be a is even if he gets elected out or gets gets downvoted or out, yeah. yeah, you know. I don't think there's going to be a smooth transition at all. I think it's going to be legal, So let's talk about that. Legally moment, fraught. Right? I think he's going to fight it in every way possible. I believe that. I absolutely believe that. So I I am convinced that if he loses this that he is going to be kicking and screaming and may simply as he has done in so many things so far, mm-hmm. refuse to abide by the process. Right. Again, I think I think there'll be legal challenges, and it, it's it's going to be awful. Um, um, I gotta it, go. I in just, the fine tradition, I just of... don't have hope for it at all. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Uh, I got to go in the fine tradition of let's talk about Thrones. Someone has shown up at my house that I work with and I have to go. <laughs> but congratulations, so Anthony, on being able to speak your mind. And also, I just want to say Curtis LaRock in the chat room. I saw everything you said, and I think it's really smart. Mm. Okay. Yep. Good job. Peace out. Talk to you later. Bye, Jenny. Bye. Um. Uh...
here's the other thing. And, and Curtis said this in the chat. He said, I would love to do better than survival. I told Kent when this all started that I don't see this coming to a peaceful resolution. And this is probably maybe the, the, and he, he's, he's told me for two years now that I'm full of shit, but this is where we need the, the, the dark stinger from uh, right. Blah, 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 from make me smart. I, I don't see Trump leaving office without physical removal. I agree. I, I agree. I think it's going to come down. It, in it, I agree. I think it's going to come down to legal action prompting um, an emer- some emergency sessions of Congress, and that coming down to actual physical force to remove him from the office um, at the behest of Congress and the judiciary. And I don't think that's going to happen in the third week of January. I think that's going to happen closer to June. Wow. And, wow. And that's not saying anything of what's going to happen to the rest of the country once that occurs. Because all these far-right extremist militants and stuff like that, I think that will be their call to action. And I think that's when we start seeing real serious shit going on in our country. Militant uprisings. Yeah, I... I now uh, hopefully so, hopefully my visions of the future are the worst case scenario. I get that. But that's that's not what I'm hoping for by any means. That's just right. That's my mind going this is what's going to happen. This is looking 12 steps ahead where we yep. end up. No, I could I could totally I could totally see that and he's been paving the grounds for that, right? He, he he's has. been courting the 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 all right he's been courting white supremacists he's been courting militant groups that carry guns to uh or well armed militia i believe is the exact phrase that he used over the past 2 years and yep. i i do worry and this sounds absurd to say it out loud but I do worry about civil war. Yes, that that is that's really where my concern is, and it won't start with an election. It has already started. If that's what's going to occur, it started <laughs> with the constitutional crisis. It started with with the electing of a person who had zero right to be there. Um. Yeah. I would say that differently than you do. I think he has as much a right to be there as any other American who qualifies for the role. I think he's unqualified. Yes. I, I think he's vastly unqualified. I don't think he's got the mental capacity and I don't think he has, um, I, I don't think he was properly vetted for the position and not just an experience. Like I'm all for a commoner, you know, a, a non, yeah. a, yeah. a, a law abiding non-legal professional being in the office or any legislative office. I don't think right. you should have to practice the law in order to know, decide what's morally right for the good of the country and your constituents. Right. I don't, I think those two are mutually exclusive paths, but I don't think Donald Trump was in any way properly vetted. And I don't think that he was qualified. I'm also curious what happens with Congress, right? Congress is entirely complicit in this. I mean, not the entirety of Congress, but the power brokers in Congress are complicit with Trump. Right. The question is, why? Like, why? why? What's their motivation? Seriously, Mitch McConnell is what, like 80-something? What is his fucking motivation to stick by this person who he who who stands for things that he has vehemently spoken out against over the past decades in his career. Yeah. And and now he just doesn't do a damn thing unless it has the seal of the president on it. Like 
he the, he is again spo- the gun he is, legislation. He is vehemently spoken ab- uh, uh, out against Donald Trump in the past, right? And I th- so I like, think what's in it? Why? 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 What is in it? Like we joke about this mm-hmm. while we're watching the news, but Edward's like somebody's got pictures of all of them. Well. I like, is everybody being blackmailed? Is that the only reason that this is actually happening? Or is everybody just afraid of the Twitter account? Oh, I, God, I, fear the Twitter account. I think it's something more serious and less easy than that. I think that Mitch McConnell and some of these other senators, the Republican senators, have been waiting for the chance to push an unapologetic agenda. And even if it goes against the things that they've wanted in the past, they see that they can push forward their overall goal and use the president as cover for while they're moving shells around underneath. And so is it, is this all about justices? Partially. I think, I think it's about shaping the overall government to be more, uh, Christian and conservative. I think that's what the overall goal is that it's not just uh, the issues at hand. It's the overall leaning of the government to create more of a theocratic institution than what we currently have or what we've had recently. I honestly think that that's what it's going for is, is getting our country, our legislation in a position where they can push forward these religious ideas and morals in a direction that benefits them and their beliefs, even at the behest of others. Like, I don't think the agnostics, the atheists, the, the Jewish, the, the whatever, the Muslim, I don't think any of those even matter. I think this is a conservative Christian agenda that's being pushed forward. And I think that all the other senators, and it's really the senators because the House the House brings things up, but the Senate is actually what takes action on anything. And it's right. the Republican senators that are holding true and they're pushing forward this overall Christian, conservative, and racist agenda. And I think that's what's going on. And people like Mitch McConnell, yeah, he's old as shit. Guess what he remembers? He remembers the civil rights movement. Yeah, so what did he lose through that? I mean, this this is this is what I have a hard time understanding. Okay, the religious stuff, I get it. Cancel. <laughs> oh, sorry. Politics all day stuff, in in Alaska, Alexa will still find a way. <laughs> that was Google. But, Even worse. So the religious stuff, I I understand. There's been a fight to make to 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 drive more conservative legislation for years and years and years. As as this country has followed the trend of many other countries in the world and become um, less conservative, mm-hmm. and so I understand that, but. I don't understand the racism thing. Like where, where, so you say, okay, Mitch McConnell was lived through the civil race thing. Well, so what, how did that hurt him? How did that hurt? How did it fucking hurt anybody? How did that do anything but help our society and, and uh, attempt to break down some of the ridiculous barriers the artificial that exist barriers. in society? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, I just no, don't understand. People, uh, people like you and I don't see that there was anything lost by giving more people uh, equal rights and, and making it to where people actually had a chance to succeed, albeit we never elevated that to the same chances that you and I have as middle-aged white men. Um, but there's still it's still better now than it was in the Jim Crow era. We don't see anything wrong with that movement because it didn't affect us. And we we grew up at a time when that was what was expected, you know? And as far as 
as I said last week, um, as far as wokeness goes, I'm constantly waking up to new ideas. Like I, I've made some shitty, shitty comments and de- and decisions in the past, and I am constantly learning how to value and appreciate other people's values on a regular basis. That's just part of the evolution of growing up and, and broadening your perspectives and looking outside of your own bubble. There are people that still want to live in the bubbled world that was 1952 and they're pissed off that it's not that way, that they don't have that commanding presence anymore, that they don't have their world the way that they want it. And some of these people, I'd say the vast majority of these people never lived in that era. What was so fucking great about it? That's what I don't understand. What I, was so fucking great? I don't know either because I didn't live there and I didn't live like that and I've never been in that bubble. But I know there are people that have that, have that bubble idea because I li- spent time in the South and w- with people that are like that. I know people up here that have some of those same ideas and Alaska wasn't even part of the fucking country until ni- uh, 1949. You know, like there's just, and it's the stupidest shit. Like, I don't understand. I don't understand why you should have anything against anyone for their religious preference, their sexuality, their race, which I don't even like using the word race because we're all the same fucking race, just different ethnicities based on, on where our genetics came out of Africa. Nothing we can control. You're, you know, uh, I, I don't understand the point of holding people back for any of this shit. It pisses me off. And we're going further down that road because of people like Trump in office. So and it's let's, disgusting. Let's bring, let's bring this back to that. Cause we're, I mean, we could go down this discussion path and, and go deep in this. And maybe that's a good discussion at some point in time. I know you guys have talked about race before. I, th- I think it's something that's important to both of us. Let's bring this back to Trump. Trump is often accused of being a racist and he does time after time after time fail to do the right thing or say the right thing or, or be in the right place when there's a need to stand up against racism Mm -hmm. time after time after time. At the same time, I hear discussions, and again, too much news, too many news panels. But I hear when people are saying that they're not convinced that he is a racist, he's an opportunist. And he doesn't care that he's fucking with people's lives or that he's screwing with society or the moral fabric of our country. What he cares about is that he has the following that he needs and he can continue to do what he wants to do and he continue, continues to feed whatever is going to give him what he wants so he won't speak out against white supremacists because they love him and he won't speak out against people who are more conservative than his view. If he was a fucking Democrat 20 years ago. Trump, the, the, like the person that we're seeing in office right now, which is more the reason why I think he's like lost it mentally, it, it is not the person in terms of his, his ideological beliefs mm-hmm. that we've, we came to know over the earlier years of his life. So it, it, it fits his personality type and his narcissism and his, his maniacal behavior to just do whatever he is advised is going to give him the, you know, the most points, the most tweets, the biggest crowd, yep. the most applause, and anything he can do, no matter how horrible it is, he's going to do it. I I think he's a megalomaniac. I think he's a sociopath. I think he's a you could look in DSM five and see that he is uh an absolute narcissist. 
But when it comes to him being racist, you're either... I, I think there's a spectrum of racism. And it goes to an old... I'm going to refer to an old gay joke that I heard a long time ago. You're either not racist, absolutely racist, or somewhere in the middle, which makes you a racist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So All right, the, the, like the, the Kinsey scale of racism. Sure. Yeah. That's either you are or you aren't. There is no if you're if you're a racist sympathizer, you're a fucking racist. So Yep. Yeah, may, so maybe so, maybe he doesn't maybe he doesn't have the idea that that white supremacy needs to 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 reign and everything else. But he doesn't have the idea that it shouldn't. And that alone is enough for me to call him a fucking racist. That's fair. I, I understand why people react that way. And it's not like I don't want to label him. It's not like I don't want to like, understand what's going on. But at the same time, I see people around him like Stephen Miller, who is clearly a fucking racist and who clearly has an agenda and who is clearly driving a lot of... Trump's agenda and a mm -hmm. lot of what Trump is doing from a legislative perspective or from a, um, uh, I, I, uh, uh, you know what I mean? I, I can't think of the right word, but so I, I, I get that. I'm, I just think that it's, I honestly think it's more insidious than being racist. I think it's not caring. Right. That's, and, <laughs> and to, to, to belittle this, because I think we need to make a little bit of light of it because we're getting so deep. It's kind of like there's Pepsi people and there's Coke people. And I'm a Coke person. And when someone says, do you want Pepsi or Coke? And I'm at a table and someone at the table says, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm like, what? <laughs> that is worse than being a Pepsi person. Anyway. Okay. Yes. <laughs> as as a person who just recently switched full time to diet Dr Pepper because it tastes more like real Dr Pepper, um, it does it totally does it, it it does and Dr Pepper is my favorite soda so this is like the best thing for me I'm going to lose like fifty five million pounds by not drinking sugary shit anymore. Just course, do me a favor. I'm going to die of cancer, but whatever. Yeah, yeah. Well, d do me a favor and don't vote for Dr. Pepper because then Coke will lose and we're all fucked. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. No third party bullshit. <laughs> um, I, I think we've uh, we've uh, there, there's going to be more on Trump, but this this was the. Uh, I would love Richard if you if you're available depending on the schedule which neither one of us knows but as we get closer to the election mm -hmm. I would love to sit down and have some one-on-ones with you outside the normal feed just mm -hmm. conversations you and I can have about every man in politics um and and maybe uh, maybe even do an election night coverage kind of thing um but yeah, I'd say we, we ramp up these conversations bit by bit. Uh, if that's something you'd be interested in, dear listener or viewer, email us at uh, uh, podcast at ritualmisery.com and l let us know how often you would like to hear Richard and I rant about the current state of politics. And uh, we'll see what we can do about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the idea of a an election night thing. Get Get drunk with the Ritual Misery crew on election night that might be really interesting yeah the last election i i headed to the house as fast as i could so i could restream sergeant muffin's streaming of uh night attack on election night they were doing a special coverage and they basically their stream got overrun so there were a few of us myself included that had to restream our streams so other people could watch <laughs> Um. Yeah. It gets, Interesting. Yeah, it, it it gets pretty crazy, and to watch Brian just melt down like that when uh, the God King was officially elected, uh, yeah, it was it was, hmm. it was a sight to see. Interesting. Yeah, election night. I was um, I I, I was 
I was, uh, I, I forget what the term for it is, but I, I was, I solo drunk myself into a stupor on election night. Yep, I wasn't sober either. Um, it was, a, it was I, a sad night. I hated Hillary for all the reasons too. Um, but I just, I couldn't fucking believe that Trump won. And so the, here's the thing that I think people need to remind themselves about as we go into November of next year. Were those reasons important? Like, I, I really think we need to 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 weigh things more carefully as we look toward who is the right person. And I mean this even as we look at the Democratic primaries, Democratic primaries. Yeah. And, and, and frankly, if there are going to be any, the Republican primaries, wouldn't that be interesting? Well, there is a, officially a challenger. Of course. I don't remember his name, which is part of the problem. He doesn't have a chance. No, but, I mean, I think I think we need to look at at you know what are the qualities that we need in a person who can be in this office, not just oh let's blow up the system because it's not working and everybody's fucking corrupt. Yeah. Also, can we get some pressure on the state legislatures to pass this fucking community bill between all the states that says you know they abolish the the, the they'll throw all of their their votes or their, their uh, um, electoral college votes towards whichever candidate wins the popular vote. There's only, we're only like two states shy of making the fucking electoral college completely obsolete. Can we just really, yeah. Can we get that pushed? I didn't realize that. That's kind of cool. Yeah. I didn't realize the, that that was a thing. Essentially the, the, the states assigned on said is as soon as they have 270 um, electoral candidates spots that all of them will put their votes by law to whichever candidate gets the largest uh, percentage of the uh, of the popular vote, thereby canceling the power of the electoral college. So the electoral college starts the the election process, but it doesn't cinch it. It, it wouldn't. It wouldn't matter. Whoever won the popular vote, those states would then dedicate the, all of their lo- electoral college votes to the popular vote president or popular vote winner, and it would be. I understand more than- it, yeah, but I mean, mathematically, does that work out? Like, what if, like, you have big states and small states, and you have right, like, which uh, which is why it comes in that all of them. Uh, part of it is that none of them will do this until all until they have enough votes to counteract any other votes that come in. Hmm. So interesting. You know, they're at like 252 electoral college votes right now, and they need 270 to cinch. So basically, like two states, one one big state could bring them over the limit. And I forget the exact numbers because it's been a while since I looked at it, but one big state signs on, and then the electoral college is completely defunct because these states are enough to carry the election by themselves. Also, can we just fire everybody in the Florida election board and start from scratch because seriously what the fuck that's uh, I, uh, <laughs> you know there are already trump operatives in these states preparing legal battles for the of most minuscule shit of course there are and i mean that's t- i to be fair that is probably true on both sides i imagine that both parties have legal teams ready to jump on any state. Yep. Oh yeah, this this next election is going to be a fucking madhouse. All right, let's move on to happier things. Yeah, um what uh what the hell are you doing coming up soon? I am so excited. So I know I just talked about how I'm I'm working and that's exciting, which would suggest that I just like do nothing all the time and I'm constantly on vacation, but the reality of it is that I haven't actually gone on a vacation. Like Edward and I haven't gone away together for more than like a long weekend for seven years, more than seven years. Wow. And we are finally at a point where we are going on vacation. We have everything lined up. We're taking the dogs. We have a house sitter coming and staying at our house for the two weeks that we're going to be away. We run out of house. The problem is that it looks like Dorian is going to get there first. (laughs) 
Well, I mean, that brings out plenty of snuggle time. <sighs> so we don't <laughs> we don't really know what the hell is going on. Like we're supposed to leave on Saturday, yeah, and be there on Saturday evening, and it's a six and a half hour drive. And right now they're under an evacuation order. Right. Tomorrow morning, the worst of it is going to be over the Outer Banks area where we're planning on going. And our one of our friends who's traveling with us is coming to uh, visit us tomorrow, and they'll be going down with us. And our house sitter is showing up. And I mean, we may all just be staying here for a, a, a long weekend in... Exciting Annapolis, Maryland. <laughs> I don't know. They got a place that's got some good sandwiches. You can always just go there. Yeah, that's a possibility. <laughs> right down there on the waterfront. Um, <sighs> good wow. God. That's, that's, yeah. that's, that's pretty un- unfortunate. I'm really bummed. Yeah. I'm, I'm really bummed. So, on the other hand, if if everything goes well and you get into your your house rental like within the next couple of days, you might actually have several days with uh with some you know free beaches because all the other tourists will be gone uh, waiting for the storm to blow over. So let's assume. I don't want to assume. Let let's say hypothetically that the Outer Banks are largely unscathed and passable. Mm-hmm. I mean, with the Outer Banks, what you're really worried about is storm surge mm-hmm. because they're crazy low-lying. Mm-hmm. And and I don't know if anybody's actually... I, before we actually planned on going there on vacation, I never really looked at the geography of the area. <laughs> it's like this line. It's like a sand dune. Yes. It's like this sand dune that follows the bottom corner of... North Carolina. Yep. And it's not all connected. It's not. There's bridges because some of it's so low lying that you can't pass from one area to the next. And it is so low lying that it will very likely be overtaken by storm surge. Mm -hmm. So what we're really worried about is that either from stuff like floating around or from uh, like any damage that might happen from the wind, that it's unpassable and that we can't get to where we're supposed to be. It's only a and that six we won't hour know drive that until we're <laughs> almost there. <laughs> so we're watching the news yeah. and yeah. Oh boy. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll report in and I'll let you know, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, for those who don't know where to find you when you're not on Ritual Misery, uh, which, by the way, I believe this is your 12th appearance on the show. I think it is. I think that is right. Yeah. yeah. So you're still maintaining that. that five, I still have the record, I believe. 5% uh, rating. Uh, <laughs> you've been on 5% of our shows. Yep. Um, so with that being said, where can people find you uh, the, in the rest of the world uh, or the rest of the internet? As usual. You can find me on Twitter at Richard Gunther, and I'm in many other places on Twitter, but just follow that, and you'll get all of it. You'll get stuff you weren't expecting that is probably me, too. <laughs> but you never know. And, and I also write a little bit and podcast over at the digitalmediazone.com. Oh, and by the way, if, like, I was talking about how much I love working, hmm. like, if you're in the area where you do technical stuff and you need someone who's really good at managing technical projects or that understands agile development process, or you need a facilitator for workshops, or you need someone to prototype something for you, totally reach out to me. I love doing that shit. That's what I do. <laughs> it's That's my thing. All right. Excellent. Uh, and you can find me uh, on Twitter at Ethan Kane, E T H A N C A I N E. And you can follow the show at Ritual Misery, R I T U A L M I S E R Y. 
Um, you can join the conversation in our Discord, bit.ly slash RMP Discord. And I'm not sure if those are capitalized or not, but just try it a couple of different ways and you'll eventually find it. You can find all these links and more ways to support the show and give feedback at our website, ritualmisery.com. We are live every Thursday at 7 p.m. Pacific and diamondclub.tv and twitch.tv slash ritualmisery. Thank you so much to Kevin McLeod for allowing us to use your music. And thank you for listening for me, for Richard, for the absent Kent, for Jenny, and for you. This has been your Ritual Misery Podcast. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> All righty. What did you forget? You had a look in your face like you forgot something. What did you forget? Oh, no, I remembered. That was my, I'm surprised I remembered. Well, what did you remember? <laughs> to hit the button <clears throat> to close the show. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know how many times that's actually edited in post. <laughs> it is. Oh, see. I don't know. I missed that. <laughs> See, I, I'm here and I'm just like, oh, it all went fine. Like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, it all went fine. That, that was the surprising part.